Hello, I am Bhakti. I'm a third year student of economics at Azim Premji University, Bangalore. I'm making this video as part of my course called History of Economic Thought. In this video, I'll be talking about neuroeconomics, which is a recent field in economics. I'll be discussing the goals and aims of the field, some of the techniques used in this field, the connection with the neoclassical school of thought, and ending, I'll be ending this video by talking about the limitations of new economics. Okay, let's begin. Neuroeconomics is an interdisciplinary field which combines neuroscience, psychology, and economics. It is a theory of human decision making. Neuroscience is a field of biology which studies the nervous system and thus contributes to understand how brain produces decisions or how brain helps in making decisions. This is the brief history of uh, neuroeconomics. As I said, neuroeconomics is a recent field and it originated in 1990s. It grew rapidly in 2000s. It is an extension of behavioral economics and experimental economics. The watershed moment of the field was when the book was published by Paul Glimsher called Neuroeconomics decision making and the brain. Paul Glimsher is has done pioneering work in in this in developing the field of neuroeconomics. He has conducted various experiments also he has conducted experiments on animals and he has done a crucial role in developing the field. This is a photo of Paul Glimsher. Good the goal of neuroeconomics is to provide a descriptive decision making theory which is not restricted to economic theory and more realistic than that of homo economicus i talk about descriptive decision making and the the notion of homo economicus in the couple of slides decision making decision making can be subdivided into two theories the normative decision making and the descriptive decision making the normative decision making understands how decisions should be made while descriptive decision making theory understands how decisions are actually made neuro neuroeconomics focuses on descriptive decision making and tries to understand how brain how human brain actually produces the decisions the role of neuroeconomics the neoclassical school of thought or marginalist school of thought have concepts like utility preferences but these concepts are highly subjective in nature and they cannot be directly observed neuroeconomics provides the tools and methods to study human behavior in a more new and in a objective way it uses techniques like positron emission tomography pet and functional magnetic resonance tomography fmri to study the brain in order to understand how human be how human beings take decisions these are some of the current topics of research in neuroeconomics as i said neuroeconomics employs or has uh, concepts like preferences and utility preferences plays a substantial role in economic theory and has significant influence in economic decision making for example brand preferences some people prefer to to buy objects or commodities of a certain brand preferences are could be observed directly and can be assessed by questionnaires or observations of behavior but they cannot be objectively under preferences cannot be objectively understood neuroeconomics studies these studies preferences 
by employing neuroeconomic techniques like fmri to study activations in the brain a better understanding of preferences would be useful to for more concise predictions of market reactions for example advertisements how ad how advertisements affect preferences would be very crucial to understand or it will be helpful to understand the estimations of elasticity of demand utility utility is also a crucial concept in marginalist economics or neoclassical economics it is subjective in nature the value theory of neoclassical school is based on utility neuroeconomics studies utility in a more objective fashion for example if a person is given an object which is which he finds very useful certain areas in his brain the so called reward areas in his brain get activated thus it helps to study utility in a more objective fashion the feeling of utility can be correlated to the activations in the reward systems of the brain and thereby help to study utility rationality rationality is also a significant concept in neoclassical school of thought the neoclassical school of thought assumes or has a base has the basic unit of analysis as a as a rational agent a rational agent is a, is one who is self interested and who who is a profit maximizer he always looks for self interest behavioral economics and experimental economics have conducted various experiments to show that human beings do not always act rationally notions of altruism trust fairness affect the economic behavior of human beings herbert simon uh, an economist has put forward the concept of bounded rationality in which he explains that human beings do not act rationally because of conditions like lack of time lack of information or limited cognitive capacity that human beings have sometimes the framing affects how how human beings take decisions also economic behavior is influenced by emotional and subconscious processes thus economic neuroeconomics helps to understand these notions that go beyond rationality alin sanfe an economist a neuroeconomist has con conducted way an experiment called ultimatum game to understand how you how fairness affects decision making in in how fairness affects decision making i'll first explain the ultimatum game in ultimatum game there are two players a proposer and a responder they have they have 100 rupees and the proposer can can has to suggest suggest how to split the money the responder has two options he can accept the offer or reject the offer if the responder accepts the offer both of them get the agreed sum if the responder rejects the offer both of them get nothing according to the concept of rationality that neoclassical school of thought assumes the responder should always accept the offer because one is better than zero or getting some money is is better get, than getting nothing so if we assume that human beings are rational the responder should always accept the offer but when this experiment was conducted by alan sanfe he observed that respondents rejected the unfair rejected unfair offers the re responders rejected the offer which was which was a smaller sum neuroeconomics tries to understand or study what happens in the brain when people get unfair offers
Using the technique of fMRI, Alan Sanfe studied brain activations. There are two parts in our brain, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, DFPLC, and anterior insular cortex. DFPLC is the cognitive area of the brain, while the anterior insular cortex is the emotional area of the brain. The relative activation of the two areas can predict our decisions. If the insular cortex is more activated than, a, than the DFPLC, which is the cognitive area of the brain, then one, te one tends to reject the unfair offer. But if the, if the anterior insular cortex is activated less than the DFPLC, one tends to accept the unfair offer. Thus, the notion of fairness was experimented and it was understood in a better fashion by using the tools of neuroeconomics. Such experiments are conducted on animals as well. And a study was conducted on monkeys and how they give emotional reactions to unfair financial offers. Various such experiments have been conducted um, in, neuro, in neuroeconomics uh, to understand decision making. Experiments regarding um, how decisions, how decision making is affected by uncertainty or risk, or how, how notions of fairness or trust affect decision making have also been understood through using the tools of neuroeconomics. Coming to the last part of the video, I'll talk about the limitations of neuroeconomics. Um, the experiments conducted in neuroeconomics are conducted in specific conditions, but the results that you get out of these experiments cannot be generalized because if the, if the experiment was conducted in some other setting, it might, it might give some different results. So one needs to judge and understand this, uh, that the results are, con are, 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 the results are specific to certain settings and certain conditions. And thus one needs to be cautious whether while generalizing the results in neuroeconomics. To conclude, neuroeconomics has broadened the concepts of behavioral economics by employing neuroscientific tools. As neuroeconomics is an interdisciplinary field, it has helped to overcome in inherent research limitations of one single discipline. Research techniques from several disciplines have come together to, uh, to, create, to undertake new experiments and new research. This is a very recent field and it is rapidly growing. Let's see how neuroeconomics develops and if it gives new such kind of results in the future. Thank you. These are my references. Thank you so much.